NCAA women's gymnastics history. Top seed Alabama led going into the final rotation, but had to watch as Utah made a late charge while defending champ Georgia felt the pressure. Leah Brown falls for the second time. And for Georgia, they're out of it. It all came down to Utah's All-American Amy Trepanier. Her confidence level was topped only by her miraculous score of 9-9. That gave the University of Utah an eighth national championship by five one-hundredths of a point, denying Bama once again. Utah has won the 1994 NCAA championship. And they're all back for an encore. It's the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. Welcome to the Georgia Coliseum on the campus of the University of Georgia in Athens. This is where Lady Bulldog fans are hungry for a title. They have even dipped into the Alumni Club for support. Herschel Walker and Georgia AD Vince Dooley have gathered with nearly 8,000 fans. This is the 1995 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Joyce. Well, this is an annual meeting of an elite club. Only three universities have ever won the NCAA team title, Utah, Georgia, and Alabama. And even though the defending champion Utah is going after an impressive ninth championship, the attention here is focused on Georgia and Alabama and a rivalry that has reached epic proportions. These two teams really don't like each other. Time now to bring in our analyst, 1984 Olympic gold medalist, Julianne McNamara. Julianne, what about this Georgia team? They come in top ranked, and they've got thousands of fans barking for them. How much of an advantage is it? Well, Andrea, this team is so strong, I don't really think they need a home court advantage, but it can't do anything but help them. They're led by senior Agina Simpkins, a seven-time All-American, and I feel the spirited leader of the team with her spunky personality and extreme talent. Also, Lori Strong, a two-time Olympian for Canada, obviously a seasoned international competitor and can only bring valuable experience to this team. Now, despite that strength, though, Alabama has been able to beat Georgia twice this season, most recently at the SEC Championship. What does Alabama have to do, though, to be able to win here? They must have spectacular performance by the entire team, and especially Kim Kelly, their team leader, who scored three perfect tens on the vault this year. And they may be looking for Georgia to falter. The nature of this sport is who hits on the day that it counts. And if Georgia falters, look for UCLA. I think they've looked really impressive this year. And let's not forget the defending champions, Utah. And the top six teams in the country, the Super Six, compete for the team title. There you see the two SEC powers also in UCLA, Oregon State, Utah, and Michigan. Six women compete per event with the top five scores counting toward the overall team total. The four apparatus are the vault, the uneven parallel bars, the balance beam, and the floor exercise. And in the first rotation, it's Bama on the vault, Michigan on bars, Utah on beam, and Oregon State on the floor. UCLA and Georgia have buys. So that means that Georgia coach Suzanne Yachlin and company will leave the floor for the time being. And Alabama coach Sarah Patterson already with her game face on. First up, it's Alabama on the vault. Kim Kelly's first vault scored a 9-9-2-5. Here's her second attempt. Only the highest score counts. Here's a pike front and a great landing. Kim's a very strong vaulter. She's a junior. She's had four tens on this vault. And that effort by Kim Kelly, good for a 9-9-5, and she gets the tide rolling. Over on the floor now, Rondi Miller of Oregon State, a sophomore from Vancouver, Washington. Rondi opened up with a double pipe back, good landing. Setting up for her second pass. Whip through to a double twisting layout. Nice job. 
Nice performance by Miller, but we should point out Oregon State has already had two shaky floor performances that has virtually uh, taken them out of the championship contention already. Rodney has had a very clean performance. Her last pass, a double twist. Very well done. Some very dedicated Oregon State fans. They made a long trip here, and Miller gets a respectable 9825. Coach Jim Turpin with a congratulatory hug. Over to the beam now, and Utah's Suzanne Metz. A beautiful back handspring, layout back handspring. We should point out there are four events going on simultaneously. There you see the floor exercise going on in the background, and that's what the music is for, you're hearing. Utah's the top beam team in the country, and Suzanne Metz is the best of the best, top ranked in the country. And what a great event for a team to be the best at, because it's so difficult to compete on. A little wobble there, that'll just be a small deduction. Remember, the beam is only four inches wide. It's four feet off the ground and 16 feet long. It's very difficult to compete on. Gain or full twist dismount. Suzanne Metz, so dependable for the Utah Utes. And this is a beautiful tumbling run here. Right into a laid out backflip immediately. Backhand springing out of it. Perfect landing. And that's good for a 9.85 for Suzanne Metz. Beth Weimer of Michigan set for her bars routine. Weimer, the Big Ten Gymnast of the Year. Watch these giant swings with a full twist here. Right into a pike front flip, a release move. Does an excellent dismount, a full twisting double back, and a nice landing. Nice job by the senior from Toledo, Ohio. Michigan's goal this year is to crack the top three, and that's a 9-9 for Beth Weimer. And early on, Michigan is in third place. Alabama leads Utah in second. Well, the Bulldogs are anxious to get going. Michigan happy with that start. And we will be back with more from Athens after this. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship is sponsored by Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Old Spice sensitive aftershave. And by Gum Out. Before you try and tune up, Try gum out first. I know it sounds... And Yachlin trying to forget last year when her team lost the national championship on the beam, and that is where the Bulldogs will begin their quest for redemption. Also in this rotation, UCLA on vault, Alabama on bars, and Utah is on the floor. First up for Georgia, freshman Julie Ballard. She wasn't around for last year's debacle. Maybe that's part of the strategy, Julianne, in starting her on the beam. Well, coaches usually don't like to start freshmen first on this event because it is so difficult. There is such a small margin of error. If you're just slightly out of place, then that could be it. And look at that. Just right out of alignment. Big fall, five-tenths deduction. And as Julie Ballard gets back up on the beam, why don't we head over now to the uneven bars. Here's Stephanie Woods of Alabama, the Crimson Tide, hoping to build some momentum after a strong first rotation. Stephanie is a beautiful bar worker. There's a staller hop. You don't see that very often anymore. Look at the long, beautiful lines, pointed toes. The one thing Stephanie is missing is a release move. There's another Stalder circle. 
Setting up for double pike dismount. Well, Sarah Patterson says Stephanie is the rock of this team, and she gets the job done here on the bars. A 9.875 for Stephanie Woods. So already the pressure is building for Georgia and Agina Simpkins. Julie Ballard with that fall off the beam earlier scored only a 9-3. Georgia would love to toss that score out. Simpkins has to avoid disaster here. And it puts a lot more pressure on you when you're going up on the balance beam knowing that a teammate has fallen and you really, you have to hit. Julianne, you might have noticed that uh, Simpkins was chewing gum. Some of us can't walk and chew gum at the same time, and look at what she's doing up there. Well, I want to see her blow a bubble during this move. Back handspring, layout, backflip, just a tiny little wobble. Back handspring, quarter turn, she missed the handstand slightly. Last year, Simpkins developed a cramp before she competed on the beam. She ended up falling. The team was distracted, and that's where Georgia really fell apart. The jump combination, you'll see a lot of those. Switch leap right into immediate jump. That's a requirement. Gainer, flip-flop, full twist. Great dismount, and Agina Simpkins erases the memories of last year. Agina's mom, Patricia Johnson, looking proud and a little bit relieved. Simpkins with a 9825. Utah coach Greg Marsden, the winningest gymnastics coach in NCAA history, calmly taking in the events. The Utes are on the floor. That's Amy Trepanier. And everyone remembers Amy. They will always remember Amy in Utah. Pulling off that performance last year that won them the national title. Let's see how she does here. Starts out with a very difficult full twisting double back. Watch the full twist on the first flip. Well, it's amazing that Amy is even out here. She had serious back problems. It almost ended her career at the beginning of the season. She spent a month in a brace. But Julianne, you know better than anyone that these gymnasts are remarkably tough athletes. That's very true, and this sport puts a lot of strain on your back on every event, but of all of them, I think this would probably be the easiest on her back. There's a last pass, whip through, double twist, good height. But a great job. Here's the first tumbling pass. Watch for the twist. She does two rotations and she has a good landing. And the 22-year-old senior scores a 9-9 for the defending champions. Back over on the beam now, Georgia's Kim Arnold trying to help her team through this difficult rotation. She won this event at regionals, and they need a good score from her now. This is her big tumbling run. Flip-flop, layout, layout, two layouts in a row. Oh, Arnold goes down. Yachlin can't believe it. That's two falls off beam. Georgia will have to count one of them. All right, we're going to go over to the vault now. Leah Homa of UCLA getting ready for her first attempt. The three main things the judges will look for is height off the horse, distance, and landing. Look at that, a perfect landing. She sticks that one. And that's good for a 9.85 for 
for Leah Homa. Meanwhile, a very disappointed Suzanne Yachlin as Kim Arnold scores only 9-3 on the beam. So a shaky start for Georgia, to say the least. Alabama is on top after two rotations. Back with more in a moment. Back at the Georgia Coliseum, here are the standings. Alabama and Utah are a rotation ahead of the rest of the field. They will have buys in this next round. Up next, UCLA moves to the uneven bars. Michigan is on beam, and Georgia tries to pick up some ground on the floor. Here's Karima Mero from UCLA, majoring in sociology. Julianne, you've been impressed with this UCLA team this year. How would you characterize the team? Well, they're definitely more like a Georgia team. They're risk takers. They have a lot of difficulty, and I think a team to reckon with in the future. And they've been much more consistent this year, and that will only improve. Watch this high release move. She flies over the bar, called it to Kotchev. Double layout back flip dismount. Oh, that cannot be done better. Nice job by Merrill. There's a giant these moves are difficult because you really can't see the bar until you actually grab. Watch the momentum as she sets up for this dismount. Perfectly straight body and a great landing. Marrow energizes the Bruins with a 9-9-2-5. And over on the floor, Lori Strong trying to do the same for the Bulldogs. They really need to get kick-started here. Here's a two-and-a-half twisting layout backflip. Over-rotated and stepped out of bounds. That's one-tenth for each foot out of bounds, so she had one-tenth in deductions there, plus the steps out of the tumbling path. Well, that is very uncharacteristic of Lori Strong. She's usually so solid and doesn't make mistakes like that very often. That's a very difficult pass to land because she's facing forward on the landing. It's much more difficult. Handspring front full twist. Not a real difficult pass. Well, you almost get the sense that Georgia is trying just a little too hard, trying to dig themselves out of that hole. And that's a common reaction to a pressure situation when you have to come up with a routine. You do press too hard, and here she just over-rotates a little bit too much, steps out of bounds. A 9-7-0 for Lori Strong. This is a close-knit Georgia team, unified in all efforts especially when it comes to defending themselves against their biggest rivals of all time, the Tide of Alabama. The Hatfields and the McCoys, the Roadrunner and the Coyote, these rivalries pale in comparison to the one between three-time champion Georgia and two-time champion Alabama. Everything isn't peachy between the neighboring states. Their contrasting styles and diverse attitudes have resulted in a rivalry unmatched in gymnastics. A lot of people are critical now of people who are candid and say what's on their mind and, and uh, you know, get a little spirited and a little feisty. But, you know, I think as long as it's, it doesn't get out of hand, um, uh, you know, it's great for our sport. In February, at a meet in Georgia, the two coaches were involved in a dispute over extenders for the uneven bars, a confrontation that turned personal and ugly. I learned a lesson, and it was unfortunate, but I really feel like um, all the attention that's surrounding it was, was maybe um, not in the best interest of the sport. Uh, in that particular incident, it was a very emotional period of time for me, and um, I emotionally spent and just was a little too spontaneous for my own good. <laughs> the intense feelings go well beyond the gymnastics floor and have created plenty of tension between the fans of the dogs and the Crimson Tide. Their crowds are not as exciting, their gymnasts are not as energetic, they're not as fun to watch. I, I just think that uh, the rivalry is very intense. And I see Georgia as um, real arrogant, a uh, very uh, hard-nosed group of uh, people over there. I think the key difference between Georgia and Alabama 
uh, is the fact that uh, the coach, Suzanne, is a really uh, dynamic, uh, diverse individual that just brings a lot of glue. They seem to be rather cocky and arrogant, and their coach just... I don't know, she, she's definitely not very popular around here. I think the fans have really rallied to get behind their teams, which is the way it should be. And I personally think that it adds a great deal to our sport and, and to the media opportunities and to the growth of collegiate gymnastics. Yeah, but Suzanne Yachlin doesn't need any of those distractions today. Georgia faces a critical point in the competition. Agina Simpkins ready to go on the floor. Again, she's in a tough situation. Georgia already with a low score they'd like to dump. But Andrea, she's great on this event. She opens up with a double pipe back. Nice landing. This is the event that shows the artistic side of gymnastics, the choreography, showing dance requirements, jumps, obviously difficulty in the tumbling, and personality, as you mentioned earlier. And this is where Akina Simpkins really shines in the personality category. Definitely. Front pull right to a pike front. She added that front flip to make it more difficult. She has great leaping ability. Watch right to the split. Watch, she'll do a double twist, and when she lands, she'll punch front. You can hear the dogs are barking in the crowd, and she gets a standing O from the Bulldog fans, a 9-9 for Agina Simpkins. So Georgia picks up some steam in this rotation, but they still trail halfway through the competition. It's Alabama in the lead, followed by Utah, Michigan, UCLA, and Georgia. Let's go over to Julianne. I'm here with Alabama coach Sarah Patterson. You're at a hostile arena here. Are you surprised to be in first place? We're just real excited so far that we've gone through two events and done a great job. we got to get by the balance beam. Um, this is great for college gymnastics. Thanks, Sarah. Andrea? All right, Julianne, I'm with Georgia coach Suzanne Yachlin. A little bit of a shaky start. How disappointed are you guys to be tied for fourth right now? <laughs> well, that's sort of an understatement, but, you know, we're only halfway through the competition, and we have great balls. I think we have the best vaulting in the competition, so I think we can make some of it up there. You know, it's a lot to make up, so... Uh, you know, we just have to wait and see and take it one step at a time. Okay, Suzanne, and Georgia's next step will be to try and silence those Alabama fans. We'll be back. For this routine. Beth made some changes of her own. She laid out her dismount. Full twisting, laid out, double back. Taken from the men's high bar. Truly amazing. UCLA's Stella Ume and Georgia's Leslie Angeles tied for the floor title. Stella performed a double layout on the floor. An incredible pass. <laughs> Leslie Angeles also dazzled the crowd. She tumbled a full twisting double back. But they would share that title with who else but Jenny Hansen. And Hansen picked up yet another championship for her perfect beam performance. Yeah. Jenny is a picture of consistency. And along with very difficult skills, double twisting does not perfect landing. So Jenny Hansen won four of the five individual titles, becoming the most decorated gymnast in NCAA history. Back to the team competition after this message and a word from your local station. Plucky may have found a good luck charm in infant daughter Elizabeth. Wolverines are in third place. Greg Marsden's defending champion Utes are in second. 
And Sarah Patterson's Alabama squad, after being runner-up the last two years, will try to hang on to first. We're halfway through the competition in the fourth rotation. Utah is on the vault, Alabama on beam, Michigan on the floor. Georgia and UCLA have buys. And we join Alabama's Danielle McAdams already on the beam. Remember, four events going on simultaneously. McAdams not performing to the music you're hearing. That's over on the floor exercise. Back handspring right into a tuck jump. Full turn, a little wobble there. Watch this leap, switch leap right into a side leap. Danielle McAdams, a freshman for the Tide, just 18 years old. There's a difficult dismount, double back dismount. Oh! Completely overturned. Ouch. Well, actually, she looks a little more embarrassed than she does hurt. Well, that's a 9-3 for McAdams. Too bad. Alabama could be losing an opportunity to make a move here. Over to the vault now, junior Megan Cottle of Utah. This really isn't their best event, is it, Julianne? No, it's not, Andrea. They are consistent, but they're not flashy. They don't have the real big difficulty, but Megan's a good vaulter. High front, nice vault. On the pike front vault, you want to look for the pop off of the horse, positioning of the hips, bent at the hip, and dropping out into the landing. That's a 9-9 for Cottle, and that's assistant coach Megan Marsden in pink, also wife of coach Greg Marsden. Here's Heather Kabnick, ready to go on the floor for Michigan. And Andrea, talk about potential. Heather is only a freshman, and she is doing some of the most difficult tumbling in the competition. A full twisting double back. Beautifully done. She is the Big Ten Freshman of the Year this year. <laughs> Heather gets ready for her second tumbling run. Punch front through to a one and a half twisting front. And that's called a Rudy. It's named after a gymnast like all the gymnastic moves are. Michigan really performing well as a team here. Their goal coming in, as we mentioned, was to break into the top three at this competition. Since 1989, only Georgia, Alabama, and Utah have held those top three spots. So they're doing well. They've got to be happy. And right about this time, Heather's getting tired. A floor routine is about 120 usually, a maximum of a minute 30. But watch this, a double backflip at the end of a floor exercise. It's so difficult, you're so fatigued, and an incredible landing. Nice job by Kavnik. And it's a 9.95, a new career best for Heather Kavnik. And Michigan is hanging in there. Back now to the beam, the pressure on Alabama. Kim Kelly. She performs a very difficult match. She punch fronts onto the bounce beam. Oh, she missed one foot, but she pulled it off. Close call, and at this point in the competition, there is very little room for even the smallest mistakes. Sets up here for a backhand spring, laid out backflip. She must make this. Right over the top, perfect landing. As we mentioned, we've got a four-ring circus going here. Let's check in on the vault. Here's Utah's Suzanne Metz of Vault All-America. She also performs a pike front vault. Little hop on the landing, but a good vault. Well, that has been the story for Utah so far. While others have faltered, the youths have remained consistent. <laughs> Mets with a 9-9 for Utah, and the competition remains very close. The tide was lucky. Alabama's Kim Kelly hung on to score a 9-7-5 on the beam, and Alabama is in the lead over Utah. But when we come back, Georgia re-enters the gym, anxious to make a comeback. Stay with us. The Bulldogs.
Bulldog sporting a look of fierce determination. Here's Julie Ballard's first vault, a critical rotation for Georgia. High crumble, great landing. And that is exactly the kind of performance they need to get this crowd and this team going. A 9-9-5 for Ballard. Georgia looking to move up in this fifth rotation. Five teams are still in it. Alabama clinging to a slim lead over Utah and Michigan. Georgia and UCLA have work to do. In addition to Georgia on vault, Utah moves to the bars. UCLA on beam and Alabama is on the floor. Here's a list of friends of Utah. Boy, how deep is this Utah team, Julianne? We keep hearing another name. Yes, and another hero each time because with all their injuries, they've had to pull from the depths of their team and come up with good performances from the entire squad. Injuries were such a problem. Greg Marsden told us several times this season, the day before the meet, he didn't even know if he could field a team. Performing well so far, setting up for her dismount. One and a half, twisting, laid out flyway. Let's see. Good landing. And Friends gets the job done for the youth. Watch the height she gets on this release move. She skies over the bar. It's so difficult because she actually flies over the bar. She can't see the bar until she grabs it. And that's good for a 9-8 for Friends. As we mentioned, UCLA still with a shot. This is Stella Ume on the beam, one of the Bruins' most consistent beam performers. And I think Stella is a wonderful gymnast to watch. She has style, she has charisma, and she's incredibly powerful. Former member of the Canadian Olympic team. Talk about power. Watch this double back dismount. Great job. Ume with a 9-8-2-5 for the Bruins. Alabama with the lead, but Sarah Patterson looking very concerned. Merritt Booth up next on the floor, but this is not Bama's best event. Take a look at what happened earlier to Marna Neubauer. This happened on a fairly easy move up front with a full twist. Watch, she under-rotates, her feet flip out, and she lands right on her seat. And Neubauer scores a 9-3-5, so again, that is a score they'll want to toss out. They need Booth to be solid here. Andrea, talk about pressure. She must have a great performance here. Some gymnasts thrive on that. Others fold under pressure. Well, Sarah Patterson has always been impressed with the size of Merritt Booth's heart. This is a key move for Merritt. Double tuck back. Nice landing. Booth has been a big factor in Bama's success this year. Her second tumbling run, front with a full twist into immediate punch front. Oh. Oh. Back rolls out of it. That's a big deduction. That's considered a fall. So Alabama will have to carry one low score. And when you're in a competition as tight as this one, uh, that's something you really don't want to do. Could knock them out of first place. Last pass is that Trudy flip. One and a half twisting front. Not a really difficult move. Well, some disappointed Alabama fans, they know the implications, and Sarah Patterson's squad in trouble as Merritt Booth scores a 9-2-5 for the Crimson Tide. All right, Utah is wrapping up its work on the bars. This is who you want up there right now, Sandy Woolsey, last year's NCAA Uneven Bars champion. Sandy is an excellent bar worker. She's a former national team member for the United States. Watch her release move. Another Tkachev named after a male gymnast taken from a high bar move. In fact, all the moves on the women's bars are now taken from the men's high bar. Full twisting double back. Great landing. 
The youth very excited with that routine. There's that release move. Again, it's a blind catch. She flies back over and grabs the low bar. And the reason this dismount is so difficult is she adds a twist to the first flip right there. So hard to get those two flips around. And a perfect landing. A 9.95 for Sandy Woolsey, and that puts Utah in great position. Over on the vault, the Bulldogs trying to get a rally going of their own. Here's Georgia's Leah Brown. What a treat to see a different vault. She taps out of that pipe front. An amazing vault. Well done. Leah Brown was in a car accident, totaled her car just two days before this competition. You'd never know it. 9925 for Brown. And the Georgia Coliseum is rocking now. So here's how it looks heading into the final rotation. Utah and Alabama are done. So the best Alabama can do is second. Georgia gets itself back into striking distance. So the youth leave the floor with the lead. But Georgia is in control of its own destiny. We'll be back with the final rotation after this. Greg Marsden can only watch now as his youths have a final rotation by Suzanne Yachlin hoping to push her dogs through to the top. UCLA will be on the floor. Georgia on the uneven bars. And a relaxed Michigan team moves to the vault. So here are the standings. The top two teams, Utah and Alabama, have completed the competition. Now it's up to Georgia and Michigan to determine the final outcome. UCLA is pretty much out of it. First up on the bars for Georgia, Kim Arnold. Kim mounts with a basic kip. Right there, she moves into a free hip. Heck, catch the high bar. Oh, completely oh. missed the bar. So right off the bat, Georgia is in the hole again. Quickly now, over to the floor. Here's Karima Marrow of UCLA. And watch this awesome tumbling pass. Double laid out back, but beautifully done. Another teammate of her performs that pass, Della Ume. Hard enough to have one teammate doing that, but to have two. Well, UCLA is always so much fun to watch on the floor. As we mentioned, they are out of a title chase, but this is an improving team. Seems like they could be a powerhouse in the next couple of years. Definitely. And there's a nice high double twist. She's a senior. It's her last NCAA competition, and she gets a perfect 10. A perfect ending for her collegiate career. Karima Merrill. Over at the vault, Michigan still in mathematically, but they basically need a 9.95 from Beth Weimer to stay in it. And she vaults a front tuck with a half twist. She'll need to nail the landing. Light ball, I don't think she can get the 9.95. A 9.85 for Weimer, so Michigan drops back. Utah, meantime, cannot bear to watch. They're in the hallway. The Utes got some help from Georgia's Arnold, who ended up scoring a 9.25 on that bar routine we just saw. Leah Brown getting ready. One more bad score, and Georgia is history. Preceding Brown, watch Leslie Angeles and this great move. She adds a full twist to that reverse hat call to Tkachev, increasing the difficulty. Angeles gets a 9-8. And remember, this is the last team with a chance to catch Utah. Here's Brown now trying to keep the dream alive for Georgia. And Andrea, this is a good event for Georgia. They're capable of performing very well on this event. She starts out here with a full twist to that giant. One and a half twist into a Jaeger flip. It's a front flip in a straddled position. A little sloppy in her form. 
sets up here another big release move that reverse tech oh peeled off of the bar what a shame for georgia well brown will get back up let's take another look at what happened it's really hard to tell why she missed this move she had good height flew over the bar her hands both grabbed the bar she might have had a problem with her hand grip she was wearing georgia falling apart in this last rotation brown with a nine three two five it is done and the utes know it no one can catch them now Nothing but profound disappointment for Georgia and Suzanne Yachlin, the overwhelming favorite, letting the championship literally slip through their fingers again. We'll be back. Utah Utes head back into the arena to be crowned champions. So Utah defends its title from a year ago. Alabama and Michigan tie for second. Georgia finishes way down in fifth. Let's go over to Julianne now, who's standing by with the victorious Utes. A lot of people were doubting you guys this year. You've had a rough year with injuries and things happening. Did you doubt yourselves at all? Um, you can't doubt yourself. If you go in with a negative attitude, it'll kill you. We just went out there and had the time of our life. We didn't even expect this. Yeah, I think we had a lot of confidence coming in just to go in and do the best that we could. So is it that much more special to everything you've been through and now you're national champions? Yeah, it, it's, it's been an unbelievable year and one that we didn't even know if we'd be here when we started the season. And uh, to be here and to have won is, is uh, unimaginable. Congratulations, Utah. Yes. And what a special day for these young women. The University of Michigan breaking into that elite top three for the first time ever. But once again, it's Utah alone at the top. The Utes winning their ninth NCAA championship in 14 years. For Julianne McNamara, I'm Andrea Joyce saying so long from Athens. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship has been sponsored by Charles Schwab and Company, helping investors help themselves. 100% cotton wrinkle-free dockers. And by Tenactin. If you want a medicine that acts tough, get tough acting Tenactin. Next Saturday, CBS Sports brings you the NCAA Men's Gymnastics Championships at 2.30 Eastern Time. And coming up next, live third round coverage of the LPGA Sprint Championship. Congratulations to Utah, the 1995 national champions. And for Greg Marsden and company, rest assured, winning never gets old.